Hi everyone, this is Douglas at PCC, and this video is a quick overview of patient privacy features of PCC and PCC EHR. There are a lot of different tools and features that can help your practice make sure a patient's medical information is protected. I'm going to show you a lightning round overview in about five minutes, and then give you links where you can go to learn more. Cover PCC system-wide protections, the chart audit log, sensitive diagnoses and labs and other orders, teenage patients and the patient portal, parent accounts for patients, confidential notes, clinical alerts, and other policy considerations. Let's start with the big, sometimes forgotten, privacy features when working with PCC. Uh, PCC EHR and our revenue cycle management tools do a lot to protect private health information uh, just by default. You already know that everyone at your practice logs into PCC using a password. Unlike a paper chart, no one can just walk into your practice and read a patient's private health information. What you might not know is that when that data, the chart, is not being looked at, it is encrypted. Your practice's server has an encrypted hard drive. All backups of your data, either locally or in the cloud, are also encrypted, uh, as are the secure communication standards we use when you send a claim or receive an electronic lab test result or um, do some other communication outside of the patient's medical record. Along with all the privacy tools or security features you will learn about in this video, you should know that PCC logs access to patient records. Whenever someone at your practice even opens a chart or looks at any part of a chart, PCC EHR logs that activity. Obviously, we log when a clinician enters a diagnosis or, or charts other information, but PCC EHR goes the extra step of logging when someone even looked at a patient's PHI in their chart. You can use the audit log. To audit a chart and see who's been looking at a particular patient's records, or audit a particular employee at your practice, see what charts they opened in order to find any unauthorized access. Let's dive into some of the most common types of privacy questions we get at PCC. First, let's say a patient has a sensitive diagnosis. Do mom and dad automatically see that diagnosis on the patient portal or on other printed reports? And what about sensitive labs or other orders? Uh, here's how it works. Every time a patient gets a diagnosis, the clinician can specify whether it is visible on patient-facing materials. This Include on Patient Reports checkbox indicates whether information is available in the patient portal or on the patient visit summary or other reports. That's what it looks like when a patient has a diagnosis on a chart note. You can see that lock symbol right here. You can do the same thing on the medical summary. The problem list for the patient has the same feature. You can also do the same thing with labs or any procedure you perform in your practice, any order of any kind. Um, you will see that same option. and that same locked indicator. It's awesome that parents can access PCC's patient portal and see what happened at their kid's last physical, get an immunization record right on their smartphone, uh, but that kind of access also means your practice needs to decide whether a particular diagnosis or a particular lab or, or referral or other order should be visible. So do you have to remember to check these locks every time you do an STD test or enter a certain diagnosis? No, you don't. Um, you can set your practice's default value for these checkboxes for each diagnosis or lab. So maybe any time a patient gets a certain diagnosis, you don't want it visible by default, no problem. You can open the Diagnosis Configuration tool, which is up here, and set that up for all sensitive diagnoses. Similarly, what about referrals or other orders you do in the practice? You can do that in the protocol configuration tool. And for lab orders, you can do the same thing right in the lab configuration tool. I'm zipping through these quickly. We have step-by-step -step guides online you can look at later, walk you right through the process. I just want to show you that it's pretty straightforward. There are a number of different places to set some of these privacy controls, but once it's set, it's set. You never have to change the lab's configuration again until the labs you offer change. Next up, another common privacy issue that pediatric practices encounter. 
patients who pass their emancipation age. Is it 18? Is it 15? Uh, maybe for your practice or for your state or region, there are particular rules around when a patient's medical records become their own. PCC tools can handle those rules. First, uh, for access to the patient's record, PCC's amazing patient portal, My Kids Chart, has an emancipation age. You can set that age to your practice's policy or the laws or rules of your state or region. Now, some offices trigger this at age 14. That part is up to you. When a patient turns that age, all patient portal users who have not been granted specific permission will no longer have patient portal access to the patient's PHI. Portal access is based on an email address that you've verified with the parent or patient, so you can create a portal account for the patient and grant only them access to their account to review medical records. Or you can manually indicate right here that the parent or guardian should still have access past the age of emancipation for some reason. Maybe you have a written agreement where they are defined as a patient representative, for example. Basically, you can set your practice as default and then your staff can set medical record access on a patient-by-patient -patient basis. A quick tip that one of our pediatric practices sent in. As a clinician, you can set up a patient portal account for yourself and add a patient to your test account. Then you can log in to the patient portal and see what a parent or guardian would see on the patient's record, look at the visit, and verify whether or not a sensitive issue is part of the patient portal record. If a parent's insurance company is billed for a patient's visit, they may see that visit or services on their EOBs from the insurance company and on their bills. How that works varies in different situations. What can you do if a patient's visit should never be visible to the parent or guardian? PCC has a family-based record system, and that means that a patient's medical record and the billing record are kept somewhat separate. When a patient reaches a certain age, you have the option of giving them their own new account record. Right in their demographics, you can create and assign an account for themselves so they are the bill payer and home account. When that happens, all future charges will only be visible on their account. Some practices instead elect to create a separate private patient chart to track sensitive visits, uh, maybe when the patient is not yet an adult. Uh, that's sort of the nuclear option. Don't record the visit in the patient's chart. Give them a second chart. It works, but you would need a practice-wide understanding of your policy and train your clinicians on the workflow. And related to the account issue, you can define a patient's communication preference, recording exactly who should be contacted and how. That's here in the demographic section of the chart. Okay, a few more useful tools. PCC EHR has a chart-wide component called Confidential Notes. It's seen here as part of the medical summary. It can also be right on the chart note. Um, it doesn't appear visibly on the screen when a chart is opened. Uh, PCC EHR logs anytime anyone discloses the contents in order to read them, and it displays that. For a special privacy concern, or if you just want to make sure that any time you open a patient's record, the staff is informed if they're over 16 or a certain age, you can use PCC's Clinical Alerts feature, a reminder as soon as a chart is opened. There are other workflow and configuration considerations that PCC recommends around security. It's a good idea to have a signed access permissions form from patients and families that you keep on file. Import it. Keep it in the document section of the patient's chart. If you're establishing a patient representative, you should have a form for that. And have that signed and placed in the patient's chart as well. You should have a practice policy on the emancipation age for patient portal access with an explanation of exceptions around special needs patients and other circumstances. Your clinicians all need to know how the uh, display on patient reports checkbox and lock toggle works. Uh, one nerdy PCC person at your practice can configure the defaults for sensitive labs and diagnoses, but it's important, like any other medical decision, for the clinician to review what's happening in the moment with an actual patient chart. Have you done a security risk assessment for your practice? And who is your practice's HIPAA officer? Make sure you have a written policy. Finally, your practice does need to know your state or region's rules, laws, and requirements. What are the laws around patient representatives? Um, at what age does a parent need permission to access their child's records? 
PCC has the tools to help you make it happen. Okay, that's a brief overview of some of the tools that PCC provides to protect patient privacy, uh, whether in relation to a legal or, or HIPAA issue or a sensitivity issue. For every tool I showed you, you can find a detailed article or video on learn.pcc.com. And for every tool I showed you, your client advocate can talk to you about your practice's needs and show you how to get started. Thanks for watching.